The iPhone 15 is the most confusing phone I've used. I spent the last two weeks with it, and it definitely has features that rival even the Pro and Ultra phones, like how usable it is under bright sunlight and how shockingly good the main camera is. Just look at these two photos here. Can you even tell which one's taken by the Pro iPhone? However, what makes it confusing is that the iPhone 15 is still missing some very common features that I even remember my S21 having nearly three years ago. And this can certainly make it less competitive than other phones in its $800 price category, but definitely not in the physical aspect. This new matte glass really makes the phone feel different. This is probably my favorite texture of a matte glass. It feels almost more soft and smooth than the 15 Pro and the Samsung's. And this frosted look is pretty cool. Some people may think that the colors this year are very washed out, and I don't know about the other colors, but this shade of green looks really good. I think it has just the right amount of saturation, and it feels very fresh. This color and material are also very good at resisting fingerprints, and same with these matte aluminum sides. I also like that the corners remain rounded, and the edges have become more rounded. It makes holding this phone more comfortable in any orientation. Overall, the iPhone 15 feels really nice in the hand, and I also personally like how light it is. But a more unique aspect is the two-tone design. The aluminum sides, the camera bump, and Apple logo are all a darker shade of green compared to the frosted back. And if you pay attention, you'll see even the new USB-C port is green on the inside, which is kind of a crazy attention to detail. So it's a shame that the transfer speed is still USB 2.0, which isn't any faster than the old lightning port. Now, the faster USB 3 speed isn't as badly needed on this phone compared to the Pro iPhones because it can't take the larger ProRes and RAW files anyways. But if you ever want to transfer lots of photos, then the USB 2.0 speed will definitely haunt you. And it's not like a USB 3.0 port would be too expensive to add to this phone. It's an $800 phone, and it really should have nicer features like an actually fast port, not to mention that many phones at much lower price points still have a USB 3.0 port. But this is just the first of many instances where the iPhone 15 feels intentionally held back. Other than that, the USB-C does provide some benefits over lightning in giving the iPhone more functions and accessories, such as this USB USB-C SSD, and now you can also charge some accessories with it. So USB-C can be a pretty big change for some, but for me, after a year with the 14 Pro, I rarely even plugged it in with a cable because MagSafe is so good. It will remain my favorite way to charge, especially because the USB-C port doesn't even allow it to charge any faster than before. And MagSafe accessories like a charge stand, portable battery, car mount are also very clean to use with minimal cables involved. Now going to the display, it certainly has very impressive specs. It's super sharp at 461 pixels per inch, which is the same as on the iPhone 15 Pro. And now it can go just as bright as well to 2000 nits peak brightness, which is slightly more than the S23's 1750 nits peak brightness. And it's a significant improvement to last gen's 1200 nits. This upgrade definitely makes it a lot more visible under bright sunlight. The screen looks great, but once you interact with it, you'll realize that it's still 60 Hertz. And this is definitely an anomaly when you look at its competitors. No comparably priced Android phones runs at 60 Hertz. Even a $300 phone, the Samsung A23 is 90 Hertz. Coming from using 120 Hertz on the daily, I can definitely notice a difference. The iPhone 15's animations just feel noticeably less smooth, like opening and closing up an app, scrolling through something, changing between the cameras. Limiting to 60 Hertz is one of the ways that Apple is using to differentiate from the Pro models. But I think this move is really hurting the iPhone 15's appeal. Like, even though it has the same processor as the iPhone 14 Pro, having less smooth of a screen just makes it feel not nearly as nice. And unlike the Pro iPhones, the screen cannot change its refresh rate. So despite having an OLED screen, the iPhone 15 does not have always on display, probably because refreshing at 60 Hertz continuously would drain too much battery. It really is a shame because I actually really like the always on display. Having a dim wallpaper makes it very aesthetically pleasing, and the lock screen widgets that also show up gives good info just at a glance such as these weather widgets from Overdrop. Not having variable refresh rate screen also affects the standby mode. This is like a cool screensaver for the iPhone. When charging and horizontal, it can show all sorts of widgets, some photos, and many clock designs. I really like this feature on the Pro iPhones, where it's shown all the time. However, on the iPhone 15, it's a lot less useful because it turns off after less than a minute, and I have to tap it again to wake it. But I've also noticed it randomly turns on sometimes. I find the flashing on and off pretty distracting, so I've actually disabled this feature. And one more thing that feels missing on the iPhone 15 is a telephoto camera. I'm reminded of this every time I try to zoom in. This year, the main 
camera is higher resolution and it can give you pretty decent photos at two times zoom. But at three times zoom, even next to the Samsung S21, my almost three year old Android phone, it's noticeably not as good and it only gets worse the more you zoom in. But that aside, I've been super impressed with how good the main camera is. It's now 48 megapixels, which matches the iPhone 15 Pro's main camera. They're not exactly the same. The sensor on the 15 is slightly smaller, but the lens is faster and it lets in more light. And the result is that it looks almost the same as the iPhone 15 Pro Max's photo, even when zoomed in a ton. Both of these images are 24 megapixels, which is the new default on all the new iPhones. This is a really great change since the higher resolution makes the image more detailed with less sharpening artifacts. And it's only about 1.5 times larger than 12 megapixel photos. Before this phone, the best camera in the price range is by far the S23 with a really nice 50 megapixel main camera and a good telephoto camera too. However, now the iPhone 15's main camera is notably better than the S23's. Just take a look at these two photos, both taken using their default modes. The iPhone 15 photo has so much more detail in the tree and the building. It's the same when indoors too. The Samsung photo has a lot more sharpening and looks less natural than the iPhone's photo. But actually, this difference is partially due to the iPhone photo being 24 megapixels versus 12 megapixels on the Samsung. When they're both at their highest resolution, 48 and 50 megapixels, the difference in quality is a lot smaller, although the tree and the building still look a little bit better and more detailed in the iPhone's photo. It's really great that the iPhone 15's main camera image quality is on par with the best out there. But not just that, there's actually a big hidden advantage because it can focus as close as four and a half inches, whereas the 15 Pro Max can only focus as close as about six and a half inches, and any closer, it will switch to the lower quality macro mode. So for the times where you're trying to take a photo of something close up, the iPhone 15 will probably be better for it. But do note that the iPhone 15 Pro Max can still focus much closer with its macro mode, although the image quality is much lower than with the main camera. The iPhone 15 doesn't have this mode, which also means that its ultra wide lens cannot change its focus. For environmental shots, this is perfectly fine. However, when there's a subject involved, being able to focus like how the Pro models can is still an advantage. But to be fair, at the same price range, the S23's ultra wide also cannot change its focus. And their quality is pretty similar, but the Samsung image is quite a bit more sharpened, as you can see in these leaves here. For the selfie, I think the iPhone can be a bit too aggressive with the processing, like sharpening and contrast, which tends to not produce the most pleasing skin. Here it is next to the S23, which still has my favorite selfie camera. For video taken on the main camera, the quality is actually shockingly similar between the iPhone 15 and the S23, and the stabilization is pretty similar too. This year, the iPhone 15 gained the ability to add portrait mode effect to photos and post, and it can do it on pretty much any kind of subject. This is pretty cool, and I can see myself using it occasionally. Another software feature that I like is a new horizon level. Overall, the iPhone 15's sole two cameras are great, and to be honest, I'm shocked that the main camera photos are just as good as from the Pro model. But unlike most of its competitors, not having a telephoto camera puts it at a distinct disadvantage when taking photos of anything that's even slightly farther away. So so it might have the best main camera in its price range, but definitely not the best camera system. And as for the software, so the notch is replaced by the Dynamic Island, and after using it on the iPhone 14 Pro throughout the past year, I can say that it is very helpful in day-to-day -day use for being able to monitor something while still doing other things on the phone. And there are well-known apps that have a function for this, like Uber shows ride information and United Airlines shows flight status there. But you can also just have a cute little pixel pet on the island, and there's also this funny and honestly kind of addicting game called Hit the Island. The rest of the software also got a refresh with iOS 17. I've been on it for a while now, and here are some of my favorite features. The first one is the lock screen. I love being able to make multiple lock screens, each with their own widgets. And in iOS 17, there are some new astronomy wallpapers, and live photo wallpapers are brought back as well. Now when the phone wakes, the live photo plays in slow motion, which is really funny, and it has become one of my favorite wallpaper types. Widgets on the lock screen are very handy but now they can actually be interactive. Like I can check things off of my to-do list right from the lock screen, which leads me to the home screen that now also supports interactive widgets. Other than that though, the home screen is just the same as before. I think some kind of theming support like what's available on Android phones can be nice so that there's a quick way to make the home screen look nicer. Okay, and this next one is honestly an underrated feature. In the photo gallery, live photos can be changed to have a bunch of different effects like the bounce or long exposure, which can look very cool for waterfalls and things like that. And social media apps like Instagram on iPhone can do all sorts of animations for live photo, like the slow-mo effect. 
There are also some pretty entertaining features, like making stickers in the photo gallery and effects in FaceTime like these hearts. These are not really useful things and some people probably won't ever use them, but I think they can make calling or texting family and friends a lot more fun, so I think it's great. I also wish that the new action button on the iPhone 15 Pros can be given to the 15 as well. Having a shortcut button is pretty handy. Probably next year, the action button will be on all the new iPhones because there's kind of this trend where the base iPhone will get features from the Pro model one year later. And speaking of which, the iPhone 15 got the chip that was in the iPhone 14 Pro. For the CPU, it's quite a bit faster than the S23's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip for both single core and multi-core. You rarely feel CPU difference in real life, but being faster can still help it stay smooth for a longer time. However, for GPU, the A16 is about 19% slower than the 8 Gen 2. Also, the iPhone 15 thermal throttles almost instantly. After just two minutes, the performance significantly decreases, whereas the S23's performance just slowly declines. So the iPhone 15 is definitely not the best for more demanding games, but even for lighter games, the 60 hertz screen alone already makes it not great. For everyday use though, like web browsing and watching some videos, the performance isn't a concern at all. Also, in a way, the thermal throttling helps to preserve the battery life. After 40 minutes of running a gaming benchmark, the iPhone dropped 22% while the S23 dropped 30%. But when they're not doing something intensive, the battery percentage drop is actually very similar. After playing a 1080p live stream for six and a half hours while on Wi-Fi with airplane mode and around 70% brightness, the iPhone dropped 44% and the S23 dropped 47%. Now, the iPhone does have a 14% smaller battery at just 3,349 milliamp hours, so it is quite a bit more efficient than the S23. Neither of these two phones have spectacular battery life since they are small phones with a relatively small battery. I found that with the iPhone 15, as long as I'm not doing anything too crazy, it can last all day without a problem. Okay, so the iPhone 15 is really a conundrum. While it has impeccable design, an impressive main camera, and decent battery life, it does fall short in certain areas like the screen refresh rate, absence of the telephoto lens, and outdated port speed. These intentional omissions compared to both its pro counterpart and even older, less expensive competitors makes it a challenging sell in its price category. For those who are into the Apple ecosystem and maybe primarily valuing the design and main camera quality, the iPhone 15 can be great. But if you want more than that, then there are much better options out there at the same price. If you found this review helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. You can follow me on my other socials and you can watch more here.